Hi, I'm George Arteiro from Cloud Native Advocates team at Microsoft. On this video, I'm going to show you how to create an Azure Kubernetes Service private cluster with no public internet access and how you can remotely access this cluster using Azure CLI. Please subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications for more videos coming soon. So with no further ado, let's get started. I'm going to select Kubernetes service to create a new private cluster from the Azure portal. Clicking create Kubernetes cluster. The first thing you have to make sure, uh, select your subscription, your resource group, could be a new one. If you, I'm going to create a development test cluster here. You can, you can give any name, could be ever private one, for example. Select your region. Another important thing is scheduling your upgrades. Azure Kubernetes Service is a fully managed Kubernetes on Azure. It means that you can schedule your upgrades. You can also decide to get the one for your cluster. One very popular is node image. We upgrade the whole node image of the node for you. But you can select other options as well. And I recommend you to use now the Azure RBAC, Role-Based Access Control. That's, that's the one that's going to be used by the, the new AKS Automatic, and it's better you get it, start getting used to that. And I'm going to show, show you later why. The standard uh, Azure Kubernetes service is created with what you call a system node pool, mode system, where all the dependence uh, Kubernetes um, software is installed on those nodes. Ideally for production is for you to create a separate node pool for your applications or multiple node pools for your applications. On this example, we're going just to keep this one, but you can also um, change the, the SKU of the OS to, to be Azure Linux if you want. In this case, the default is still Ubuntu from Canonical. But then start getting interesting. When you go for networking, we want to enable private clusters. Private clusters means that there is no internet access for the control plane of Kubernetes. Kubernetes is API, and now we're going to block the external access for the API server. That means that for you to be able to manage and, um, and run commands on this cluster, you need now a different way to access it. the cluster. Is, there is no internet access anymore. Is that public access not going to be available? We recommend on our Azure Senai overlay for your network means that your IP number is not coming from the Azure virtual network anymore. It's coming from all overlay network inside the Kubernetes cluster. And now we need the um, DNS prefix. We can keep the standard one. We can remove that, for example. And also recommend to use Cilium for the data plane and standalone balancer you'll be used. Another important thing is if you want a full integration with Azure Container Registry, uh, make sure that we use like a premium uh, Azure Container Registry. I have one created here already. And I can attach this Azure Container Registry and be have only access from the virtual network from my cluster inside the virtual network. And Azure Container Registry Premium allows to to have a hash rate that's only available inside your virtual network. No public access for the container hash as well. On this video, we're going to focus on the Azure Kubernetes service access, but maybe next one we come and talk about how to do the same thing on Azure Container Hash Tree. Very important is to enable Azure policy. I'm not going to use service mesh this time. And also containing sites. And in this case, I have a default cont log, uh, container hash uh, containing sites available that I'm going to use. And I'm also going to use existing Prometheus and Grafana um, dashboards that I have created before for this cluster and enable alerts. That's pretty much 
The things that we do we have to enable CSI driver storage. Most of the modern storage now use CSI drivers. And we can also rename the second resource group that Azure Kubernetes Service used to, to create the cluster. I'm going to leave the standard, the hours start with MC, but you can also change this name if you want. If you go for review, they're going to enable and you're going to create this cluster. I have done this already because that it's going to take some time. And when you create a, cl a cluster like that, what happened? I'm going to show you. That's the cluster that I created before. That's a private cluster. And as you can see, the Kubernetes resource are not available from the port anymore. It's a fully um, private cluster where the portal doesn't have access to my resource anymore. And the only way for us to run commands now is using this new option called e run command. Okay, and I'm going to show that in a second how to do it. But that's a cluster similar as I created before with managed Prometheus and Grafana, outscaling, Azure policy, container insights, and connected with my container history, everything that they need to have a fully private cluster to run my application safely inside my company virtual network. One important thing for you to have access on the run command is what you call the access control. You have to go inside your Kubernetes cluster access control and you need to get access for this Azure Kubernetes service contributor role. Why? If you go on the documentation, they ask you to, to get access for those, these options here, this role that you needed. Run command action and command result read. If you copy this and you check um, on this row, well, even if you try to add a new row and you search for this one, there are only two options where you can run commands, plus admin row or contributor row. And that's the one that I'm pretty much giving here to my cluster where I have access to, to this permission. Now I can go on run command and I can run, let's say, get namespace, or I can run get pods, for example. That's going to take some time. The way that it works, it's create a pod inside your object managed service to run this command. Is everything available then? No. As you can see here, you can run kubectl and helm commands only. You cannot run anything else. Then that should be available for you to run your kubectl and apply things for your cluster. As you can see, I have a WebAssembly application running on this cluster, as I also already created a second node pool, as I'm going to show here. I create mainly a second was a node pool to run WebAssembly that's in preview and keep watching and keep following the channel for this video that's coming soon as well. With that's done, how can I now, if I don't want to use the Azure portal, how can I have access to my cluster? And when you create a private cluster on the documentation, they tell you the options that you have to, you know, if you want to use custom domain, if you want to, I have a custom domain as well, or DNA, a private DNS zone that they have created before, but they also tell you how to connect to your cluster. If you don't have a VPN or express route or private endpoint, or even use cloud shell with network connection, the easy way is to use this new AZ command invoke. And going to my WSL Windows subsystem for Linux, I did run some commands here. And how that works, we can use AZ. We need to install the AZ, the Azure CLI command line interface. And on the AZ, there is a AZ AKS command that can, you can use invoke, and it can also get results from the previous commands that you run. That means that I can go here now, I can run a command, let's say, give me pods, and I can do the same way that I did on the portal. I want the results straight away. I can wait 
for that. It's going to take some time. There you go, you have your result. You could do the same with the no wait at the end, where it's not going to return straw away. That's going to give you ID of this command that's running. Why that's important? Because you could have someone with permission to run commands and some people just to get the results. That's another option as well. Then if you want to get the results, you have to go get this ID here that was used, for example, and let me get this latest one here. And I can now ask the result of the command that someone did or I did myself, and I can get the same results. And that's flexible. You can get like, for example, servers. You can run any kubectl or any help command. And you can do it in one step. There is a, only a limit on the output, 512 kbytes. That's a lot of information. Uh, or you can do it in two steps like that. The documentation is very nice. You can, you can have information about um, the commands that you can run, so the, the limit here for the invoke. And they give you some examples. One last thing that I want to show is and if I want to attach like a file, like I was showing the command here, and now let's get um, the invoke documentation. The invoke lets you to also attach files. As you can see, you can attach files. If you want to attach the whole folder, you can just use dot for the folder for the current folder, or you can attach one file. Let's say the deployment YAML file that you want to run, you can just adds the dash dash file and add the, the file that's going to be uploaded to your cluster to be running from there. With this, you complete, you can run with your files, you can apply files, you can pretty much do everything to manage your cluster completely remotely. You don't have to enable VPN, you don't have to enable Express Route from your local machine. You only have to have access to the Azure uh, CLI and you have to have the right permissions on your cluster, the roles that you need. Oh, I don't want to have one with you know permission to write on my cluster. That's fine. If you if you go on the read one to get results, for example, you're going to see that this role is available. Let's add a new role and let's search for this permission. And you can see that even the reader role have permission to read results or this one that's the contributor role. So we have other options. You have, you know, log analytics people, all the readers from, from monitoring log analytics, they can also have access to those results. Another option that you have, if you wanna uh, create your cluster with uh, Azure CLI, you can use AZAKS create. That's on the documentation. You can see how to use with advanced networking. It could be overlay networking if you want, like I did it. And another option is on, on your Azure Kubernetes service, you have an option automation export template. You can get the whole ARM template that you use to create your cluster, including all the settings, all the VM size, all the node pools that I use to create my cluster. That's a good way to learn all the settings that the Azure portal is doing. Because on my cluster, as you can see, I also have a DNS zone created. If I go to my resource group, the portal created a private DNS zone for me. Okay, manage identity, everything was created in the network. network. From the portal now, you can see everything that was created. And if you are a bicep guy like myself, you can just copy this or, or save the, the download. You can download. And from the bicep, you have Azure GitHub IO slash bicep. You can just decompile, get the files from here, this template one that I download from there. And now you have pretty much a bicep file 
there are some things that you have to fix here after the convention from arm to bicep, but now we also have bicep here for you to, to play. And they even give you all the default, you know, parameters that are created that sometimes don't even know, like auto scalar profile that I use a lot um, and others, you know, configuration that's are normally default, you normally don't have to set, but it's nice to, to be able to do it. And even my class of the one I changed to be Azure Linux. I'm using the Linux audio boot, I'm using Azure Linux here on mine. That's what I have to show for everyone today. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Or well, uh, subscribe to the channel, enable the notification, and get access to all new videos coming every week or so. Thank you so much. Talk to you on the next video.